Kianora's response and Christoph uh, afterwards. And if people have uh, enough time, maybe we'll have some time for, for uh, questions and answers from the audience. She wants to. Mm -hmm. I could try to answer you in English, but uh, since we have a wonderful translator, it will be simpler to, to tell uh, a few words in French, if you forgive, um, to answer uh, my friend Saville. Uh, pourquoi 1980? Uh, je retrouve tes critiques d'il y a 30 ans. Ce sont... On ne change pas. On ne change pas. Et euh, je ne nierai pas que tu as raison et qu'il y a eu un changement de génération qui a joué un rôle très important partout. Mais j'aurais tendance à penser que les conflits de mémoire dont tu as parlé, sont plutôt un effet d'un mouvement plus profond qu'une cause. And uh, indeed, uh, one could ask the question, uh, why uh, 1980 uh, why did it start there? And um, uh, I am perfectly aware of your uh, critics, uh, which uh, mm -hmm. started uh, uh, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, you are perfectly right. Uh, there is a change in uh, generation, and that change in generation uh, played a role everywhere. Uh, but I think that in the conflicts of memory, uh, there is a origin uh, which is a much a more profound, a profound movement. Ce mouvement en France, c'est un vrai changement de type même de nation. Dans les années 1970, mort de De Gaulle, à 1980 environ. Je serai même plus précis. Je dirais presque 1975. Why? Pourquoi? Uh, Donc. <laughs> uh, so, um, oh, this, ah. oui. this uh, movement is in France, uh, it's uh, the expression of a change of the nation. And um, it all start, it started in the 70s uh, with um, uh, the goal uh, dying uh, until uh, 90, the 1980s. But I can be more precise by saying that uh, it's around 1975 that it occurred. Je dirais qu'il y a eu la rencontre de trois phénomènes indépendants mais qui ont combiné leurs effets. Uh, I would say uh, that uh, there is uh, an account of uh, three uh, different phenomena which combined their effects. Le premier, c'est la mort de De Gaulle et le rapide changement qui s'est produit autour de sa réputation. Essentiellement, le ralliement posthume de la gauche à De Gaulle. Euh, euh, ça a changé tout le personnage. Le diviseur est devenu l'homme de l'unité. L'anti-républicain est devenu le père de la République. L'homme hostile à l'Europe est devenu le père et le meilleur européen. Bref, il y a eu une transformation qui signale quelque chose de, de très intense 
autour de l'image du grand homme et de la revalorisation de tous les grands hommes français à travers de Gaulle. So, uh, when I uh, mentioned the first phenomenon, uh, the, uh, the death of the goal, and uh, when he died, uh, it, sorry, no, no. it changed uh, his uh, reputation, uh, and uh, the goal uh, uh, had uh, posthumously uh, brought uh, in uh, all the uh, support of uh, the left, and. Uh, When he died, uh, they uh, made of him, uh, from a man who was a divider, someone who unifies. Uh, from uh, a man who was against uh, the Republic, uh, someone who was the father of the Republic. And from someone who was hostile to Europe, someone who was an excellent European. And. Uh, uh, Shortly, we can say uh, that uh, it was uh, a transformation of uh, what the goal represented in a very intense way. Et cela voulait dire quelque chose. C'est la fin de la Révolution française. C'est-à-dire que de Gaulle a gagné son pari historique, qu'il avait refermé la, la faille ouverte par la Révolution française. Ça, c'est le premier phénomène. Et ça a été exprimé très bien en 1975 par François Furet, <coughs> avec son livre « La Révolution française est terminée ». La première phrase de son livre sur « Penser la Révolution française ». Voilà. This new attitude uh, contributed to, let's say, the end of a French uh, revolution, and uh, it was, was also a way uh, for the goal uh, to uh, uh, be successful in a historical uh, bet, uh, because he, uh, by being uh, supported in that way, it was uh, the end of uh, the uh, gap left uh, by the French Revolution. And this was clearly written in 1975 by François Furet, who uh, wrote in uh, the book, book yes, Pensée la Révolution Française, yes, uh, the French thinking uh, French Revolution yes, is finished. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the second phenomenon is Oh, pardon. Je... <rire> c'est la, la crise économique. C'est le début de la crise économique. En, euh, la crise du pétrole et la crise des, de, qui a mis fin à 30 ans de croissance industrielle tardive en France, mais décisive ce qu'un économiste a appelé les trente glorieuses de la croissance. Et ce début de crise économique a montré ce qu'en trente ans la France avait changé, en particulier la fin des paysans. C'est justement en 1975 que le taux de la population active engagée dans l'agriculture tombe au-dessous de 10%. Aujourd'hui, c'est 2%. C'était encore près de 50% juste après la guerre. Est-ce qu'on se rend compte du choc de transformation que signifie un pays très longtemps resté paysan, plus que l'Angleterre, plus que l'Allemagne, plus que l'Italie, et qui soudain change la nature même de sa population. Surtout qu'on ne peut pas ne pas rapprocher cette fin des paysans de Vatican II, 
et du mouvement de déchristianisation profonde que Vatican II a marqué et qui s'est traduit dans la population française. C'est vraiment un des éléments très fondamentaux du changement d'assise nationale. Alors ça, c'est le deuxième point. Then the second uh, phenomenon is uh, the economic crisis uh, with um, uh, the uh, oil and all uh, the uh, results and consequences. And we can say that uh, these, uh, this crisis put an end of uh, 30 years of uh, constant uh, uh, French uh, industrial development. Uh, it was uh, a development that came uh, late, maybe, but it was decisive. And uh, an economist uh, said that these 30 years were the Grand Glorieuse. Uh, and uh, the crisis uh, also showed how much, how much France has changed, because it was the end of uh, the agricultural France uh, in 1975, Uh, the uh, weight of the active uh, population which was working in uh, the agriculture fell under 10%. Uh, and uh, now it's even uh, less than uh, 2%. And we shouldn't forget that after the war it was still 50% of people uh, working in the field of agriculture. So we can say uh, that it's a huge uh, shock for a country uh, which more than a Great Britain, more than a Germany, more than Italy, uh, had such a change of population and that a change of um, uh, economic um, uh, occupation, uh, the economic activity in agriculture Uh, is also a parallel to what happened in uh, Vatican II with uh, sort of uh, the beginning of the end of Christianity and uh, that showed in uh, French population. Thank you. And uh, briefly, uh, uh, rapidement, le troisième uh, phénomène, uh, c'est la fin de l'idée révolutionnaire qui a été évidemment marqué en 1991, nettement par la dissolution de l'URSS, mais en France, qui a été très profondément vécu parce que le Parti communiste en France a eu une influence plus grande que dans tous les autres pays d'Europe. Et que les débuts de la fin du Parti communiste dans les années 75-78 est décisive dans l'orientation même du temps, dans la mesure où le Parti communiste a eu une influence intellectuelle très profonde, très au-delà du nombre des militants et, et qui et des, et des électeurs qui étaient tout de même, il faut le rappeler, à l'époque, de plus de 25%. Donc, ça a été un phénomène très important que cette fin de l'idée révolutionnaire qui a changé profondément l'orientation le, 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 profonde de l'histoire et qui a du même coup, dévaloriser l'avenir est permis de revaloriser le passé. Et le, 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 la preuve de ce que j'avance, c'est une date très importante, date symbolique, 1980, que euh, le président de la République, qui était à l'époque Giscard d'Estaing, avait euh, consacré au patrimoine. Après l'année de la femme et l'année de l'enfant, il a proposé l'année du patrimoine. Et il s'est passé quelque chose de curieux. Une révélation que depuis dix ans, partout, 
partout, dans le moindre village de France, des associations s'étaient spontanément créées pour sauver le rempart de la ville, le lavoir du village, pour faire des fêtes avec des vieux costumes retrouvés dans les greniers. Bref, un sentiment des vieilles choses, du passé, un attachement tout nouveau, sentimental, euh, à un passé qu'il fallait retrouver. Et là est la source vraiment, l'enracinement d'une transformation de la mémoire. So, uh, the third phenomenon is uh, the end of the revolutionary ideas. And it started uh, in 1991 uh, with uh, uh, the um, uh, crumbling Sorry. of the, uh, your, the uh, Soviet Union. And, okay, and then uh, also uh, what happened to uh, the uh, French Communist Party who uh, was uh, very strong in uh, France as compared uh, to the rest of uh, Europe. And uh, uh, that uh, happened also uh, at uh, around 75, uh, 78. Uh, there was a very important change in uh, the um, uh, time factor and uh, all uh, this uh, orientation. Uh, the, there, is, there was no uh, value any longer uh, to the future, uh, but what was uh, valued was the past. And uh, another proof of uh, that change is in 1980, uh, when uh, Giscard d'Estaing was a president uh, and declared that uh, that would be the year of the heritage. Uh, before that, uh, we had uh, the uh, year um, dedicated uh, to uh, women and then also to children, to the child. And uh, when he decided uh, to, um, about uh, this heritage year, there was a huge revelation that for 10 years each village in France had created, or many villages in France had created an, asso an association uh, to uh, uh, preserve all uh, the walls in uh, the village, uh, to uh, preserve uh, the laundry place where people would go, uh, to uh, also each year uh, dress up in old costumes. So uh, there was a uh, return to old things, uh, to the past. And uh, this uh, feeling, uh, this return to the past is at the root of uh, the uh, change in memory. That's why in 1980. <laughs> You're going to let uh, Christophe uh, answer, please. Uh, I will start with, uh, with Paul Celan uh, and uh, his uh, distinction he made between the words utopia and metopia. Uh, in ancient Greek, utopia, as he understood it, is a real place, unreachable but real. Metopia is no place. So I wouldn't put common memory in the category of metopia. <laughs> it's for me utopia, so something real, maybe unreachable, but uh, something you can open the path to. Uh, and why I think uh, uh, like that, I, I believe that like prejudice, like fear, empathy is part of human being. And we can trust also that we are empathic beings. Of course, very difficult to make it. But for, for me, the formative poem uh, was uh, Jerzy Fitzowski, uh, Reading Ashes, the poetical volume with the, with the poem Muranov Crowning, this crowning, so about the district of Warsaw, of the former Jewish ghetto in Warsaw, when he was writing that I would love to walk there, but I stepped on. So the feeling, and 
it's nothing you impose to, but it's a, just a human feeling that you are just stepping something what was very real insane because we were stepping on the stone masivas uh, you used for pavements uh, in Seine. This is something what you can w make with people and do to, to, to cope with this feeling that you are part of something larger than only your, uh, your memory and to open, to help to open uh, ourselves to this larger uh, larger space. So I'm a person, you know, like, like, like a native person, I'm stepping here. The first question I raise to Avner today is, being here in university, what was before? Here, yes? And he told me there was a par part of it, it was an Arab Palestinian village. Yeah? And th then my question was, do you have some signs of, uh, of, of that heritage? So, of course, having these signs and making work, you, you don't solve the problem with common memory, but you open the path to, to share something uh, together, which is nothing, again, imposed to the people, yeah? But it's just touching reality, yes? And dealing with uh, reality, the question is how you do it. How we, how we can do it with, with art, we, for example, in our small town, we have a performance we call Seine Chronicles, which is unusual performance. It's not just something that happened on the stage, but we play it generation by generation, and it's like a common story of the community, yeah? which collects the memories of different people, including Jewish community, uh, into, to, into the common story of the city uh, and of the place. So, of course, we don't have textbooks like that in Polish or Lithuanian schools, unfortunately. But we have a performance, we have a space in a former synagogue to be together with all these stories. And so, uh, we, we can't do it as, a, as an overwhelm reality, but you can create an alternative. You, know, you, can, you can create a borderland between separate memories and, and just give uh, the opportunity you know, to come in, to, to participate, and come back, of course, because, because this is not about rejecting or erasing your own memory and your own difference and your own trauma. Not at all. This is a huge mistake if you understand a common memory as erasing something. Uh, no. But you can share and you can build this rich reality of memory, as you said, Saul, which is very complex and dynamic yes, all, uh, all the time. So this is not about ideology, it's not about imposing nothing, but being on the ground with the people and, and trusting that empathy is part of our human being. We have uh, five minutes, no more, for one or two questions, please, lady. Yes. We asked, I asked Tamara, who comes to this little museum? She said, none of the local people. It was not an outgrowth of the community at all. It came from the top. Education may be part of this so-called movement that you speak about. Um, how can we, basically, that museum is a memorial to the Bielski family, of which I'm proudly a member, uh, and uh, the Bielski brothers. Uh, many people may know the film Defiance, which is about my uncles. My parents were in, in uh, partisans at that time. And the, lo the largest Jewish partisan family group in Poland. So this was trying to bring back some kind of history and memory. We don't have much All right. time. Okay, why are the local people not interested and how can they become interested? It, it was simply mm -hmm. imposed in a sense. 
That's the feeling that I had. Mm. Mm. That's a big question, of course, and I only think I can ask, answer you and also Saul, uh, because it's also uh, referring to his question, is that I deeply believe that such things we are talking now about, like being involved in common memory, in bridging, it's a kind of craft, a competence. This is not a spontaneous only thing. So what we do as Borderland Foundation, we have Borderland School. Tamara was a member of Borderland School. So we try to, to take it seriously as uh, also as a competence we can develop and build. And we can even, our cooperation with different universities is also to develop curricula around that, you know, to, to go deeply in this, into this craft of uh, bridge building, which I think we need badly. Uh, and it will uh, help you know, to bridge museum with local community, of course, because it's all about that. Mm. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, last question, please. I wonder how cooperative the Polish Catholic Church is in, in, in building or in helping out to clarify Poland's recent past. Thank you for this difficult question. <laughs> uh, only what I can say uh, that we try on local uh, level mm, to be together and not to reject the, the church from this bridging work and uh, trying to uh, to do it together. Uh, I would say du during the past time, during the time we, uh, I was involved in, in uh, anti-regime underground movement and uh, we had Catholic Church, our church as a strong partner for that work. It, it changed after 1989 and uh, um, the that's a, that's a problem we have of the so-called solidarity movement people, uh, so, which were so strongly connected to Catholic Church tradition as an opposition uh, to the regime and the communists to find the partnership, new partnership, after 1989. Uh, and one, uh, one of these fields is, is a common memory, you know, common bridging uh, uh, things. There are, I think there's, we need much more time to, to have our church in general on that platform, on, on that platform, but we don't give up. Uh, we could have gone on and on speaking about history and memory, but we went out of time. So I'd like to thank our three laureates for this fascinating uh, discussion. I would, I would like to, take, uh, to thank you, the audience, for your patience. And as a reward, there are refreshments outside at room 102. Goodbye and thank you. <laughs>